Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. So, shall I start? A 25-year-old female, primary gravida, 26 weeks and 6 days of gestation, presented to the ER with complaints of headache and blurring of vision since one day. Uh, coming to initial 10-second assessment, the patient was conscious or not obeying commands. Coming to airway... Yes, air somebody with headache and blurring of vision. Not this patient. What all differential diagnosis will come to your mind? Uh, some migraine. Migraine, migraine is most common. common there. Then. Uh, elderly patient, we just think about CVA hmm. can be suspected. Hmm. Uh, press can be press. Can be. Okay. Uh, coming to airway, airway was patent, no pooling of secretions. Coming to breathing, air entry bilateral equal, respiratory rate of 24 minute per minute, saturation of 97% in room air. Coming to circulation, uh, BP of 160 bar 110 millimeters of mercury, all peripheral pulses equally palpable. At this point of time, we have put an IV cannula and we reassess the BP. At the same time, we went ahead with a parallel survey. Coming to disability, GCS of 15 by 15, bilateral pupil equally reacting to light. Coming to exposure, temperature of 98.2 degree Fahrenheit with a GRBS of 130 milligram per deciliter. We again reassess the primary survey. Uh, the BP was still 160 bar 110 uh, despite the patient had taken injection PCM. Uh, we have given at this point of time, uh, injection labetrol 10 mg IV stat was given. Uh, ruling out uh, other contraindications. What are the conditions you can give Labetalol in clinical practice? Indications. Sir. Indications. Uh, hypertensive emergency hmm. patients. All patients. Uh, not any history of any bronchial asthma. Uh, not on any uh, beta blockers. No sinus bradycardia, AV blocks, anything. Total MBBS students will tell. I want more refined answer from postgraduates. Which all conditions you don't give labetalol in hypertensive emergency? Beta blocker ca cannot be given in asthma, everyone know. Cannot be given in bradycardia, everyone will know. I am not asking that, more than that. Pheochromocytoma. Pheo One condition where you should avoid beta blocker as a first line therapy is pheochromocytoma with high BP. Okay. Then, Anything else, else is done? Uh, renal artery mm -hmm. Artery stenosis may not be a problem. Mm -hmm. Pheochromocytoma is the most important condition mm -hmm. where you should avoid beta blockers okay. as a first line therapy. Okay. Uh, we reassess the BP and we have given injection labetalol. 10 mg IV said was given, sir. Uh, then uh, we have taken the samples, uh, routine blood investigations, including uh, the CBC, CRP, Is serum Is has got advantage over other beta blockers? Mm. When pheochromocytoma also, even if you give nothing may yeah, happen, yes. happen, theoretically it can create some problem. Is it got some other properties other than beta? Short other duration beta? of action? Yeah, it's a, a very short duration, that is action. one thing, second thing. Mm -hmm. Labetalol is only beta blocker or something else is? Alpha it has got alpha plus blocker plus act activity also. So, it may be safe in almost all conditions uh, uh, like uh, comparing to other beta blockers. Then we have added the sample history. A uh, 25 year old female, primary gravida, 26 weeks and 6 days of gestation, present to the ER with complaints of headache since one day. Uh, it was acute, progressive, more in the occipital region associated with blurring of vision. Uh, no other associated symptoms, no history of fever, vomiting. Uh, what is press? Saturday, 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 uh, posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome so due to mm. sudden rise in uh, hypertension. Uh, uh, in sudden blood. rise in BP, BP and what happens to the vision? Uh, blurring uh, of vision. Blurring of vision, okay. So they have blurring of vision, loss of vision, all these things are possible in uh, press. <coughs> that is especially very common in pregnant ladies. SLE, pregnancy, all these things, it is very common. Uh, no history of any fever, altered sensorium, no other associated symptoms, no aggravating or relieving factors. Uh, coming to allergic history, no history of any allergies. Uh, medication history, the patient is on iron tablets, uh, sir. Uh, 
പാസ് ഹിസ്റ്ററി നോ സ്റ്റി ഓഫ് സിമിലർ എപ്പിസോഡ്സ് ഇൻ ദ പാസ് നോ സ്റ്റി ഓഫ് ഇനി ഹൈപ്പർ ടെൻഷൻ ഡിറ്റക്റ്റർ ലാസ്റ്റ് മീൽ വാസ് ടേക്കൺ അറ്റ് എയ്റ്റ് തേർട്ടി എ എം സാർ കമ്മിറ്റ് ടു എക്സാമിനേഷൻ പാല വാസ് പ്രസൻറ്റ് ഡോക്ടർ സൈനോസിസ് ക്ലബിംഗ് ജനറൽ സ്ലിംഫിനോപ്പതി പൈലാറ്ററൽ മിനിമൽ പീഡിയഡിമ വാസ് പ്രസൻറ്റ് സാർ കമ്മിറ്റ് സിസ്റ്റമിക് എക്സാമിനേഷൻ സി എൻ എസ് ജി സി എസ് ഓസ് ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ ബൈ ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ ബൈലാറ്ററൽ പീപ്പിൾ ഈക്വൽ റിയാക്ടിംഗ് ടു ലൈറ്റ് ക്രൈൻ ലോസ് ഫോർ നോർമൽ മൂവിംഗ് ഓൾ ഫോർ ലിംസ് റിഫ്ലക്സസ് ഫോർ പ്രസൻറ്റ് in hypertensive crisis uh, under the examination should be must actually we have ophthalmologist but that doesn't mean that you you should not see it you actually you have to see and tell whether hypertensive changes we are not bothered but if there is a papilledema that is very important okay so papilledema is one of the most important findings seen in patient who is having hypertensive encephalopathy um other systemic examination was within normal limits sir uh, from my initial uh, diagnosis other system examination what all things you have to do uh, respiratory system we can look for any pulmonary edema features okay uh, gt examination we also did the doppler to check the fetal heart sound okay. it was also normal uh, uh cvs we will look for any uh, uh, features of any heart failure features okay, okay. Uh, our preliminary diagnosis was a pre-eclampsia with impending uh, signs. Sir. Mm. Uh, so, we have reassessed the BP again. BP came to 140-80, sir. And at this point of time, since there is impending signs were present, we have given injection magnesium sulfate also, sir. Okay, how do you give magnesium sulfate? Uh, we follow the Pritchard regimen, sir. Okay. We can give IM or IV, IV dose, sir. Okay. Initially, we will give a stat dose followed by uh, loading dose followed by fourth hourly, we can repeat the dose, sir. Okay. IM dose, we will give uh, 10 gram 50 percentage solution, 5 gram in each buttock, sir. Mm. Uh, IV dose, we will give uh, 4 gram 20 percentage solution uh, at around the rate of 1 gram per minute, we can. Okay, what are mm. things we have to... monitor during uh, magnesium sulfate infusion uh, we have to assess the uh, knee jerk sir mm. uh, knee jerk uh, and then we will have to look for the uh, so first of all you have to see whether the what is the creatinine ratio yeah, what is the no, magnesium level in that patient what is the creatinine mm. in that patient that these two things are very important mm. then uh, clinically you can see the knee jerk knee jerk sir have to look for the uh, urine output also sir you have to maintain a urine output more than 100 ml around 4 uh, hours sir. okay when urine output what is important uh, the excretion of magnesium sulfate is through the urine, urine sir urine. Uh, then we have to look at the respiratory rate also of the okay. patients ecg yeah what ecg findings you get in hypermagnesemia it's almost similar to hyperkalemia changes of hypermagnesemia is almost similar to hyperkalemia mm-hmm. so whenever you are giving uh, magnesium sulfate in any patients even if it is normal you have to monitor the patient it is better to monitor the patient look for bradycardia tall t waves all these things can happen there also uh, we have given magnesium sulfate uh, at the meantime we have also informed the uh, obstetric team antidote teams. for magnesium uh, calcium gluconate okay we can also at the same point of time we have informed the obstetric team sir and okay. the definitive management is termination of pregnancy right. and they have taken the patient uh, for hysterotomy sir okay. and a live uh, female baby of birth weight 650 gram was extracted sir. okay uh, now both baby and uh, mother is fine sir. okay so tell me what are the types of hypertension you get in pregnancy different uh, types of hypertension uh, sir according to the acog guidelines we basically divide into four types one is the preeclampsia eclampsia syndrome sir to say preeclampsia the patient should have uh, bp more than 160 bar 110 15 minutes apart or more than 140 bar 90 four hours apart sir mm-hmm. with either proteinuria or signs of end organ damage sir okay. uh, then comes uh, pregnancy what in- is end organ damage uh, causing any uh, prolonged hyperten- uh, excessive hypertension causing changes in the organs sir like uh, uh, we can see uh, pulmonary edema can be there uh then elevated liver enzymes uh, hem- hemolysis can be there the most important is fundus change fundus changes if there is a fundus change nothing is required that itself will tell that there is an end organ damage then most common problem is pulmonary edema okay other things lft alteration and all can be there in many other conditions also if we see help syndrome there also it is there fatty liver of pregnancy that also it is there so that is that is sharing a clinical feature but fundus changes pulmonary edema are specially seen in this type of conditions uh, 
then pregnancy induced hypertension uh, gestational hypertension that is uh, new onset hypertension after 20 weeks and which resolves within 12 weeks of delivery if the patient is a known case of hypertension or uh, has ongoing hypertension that's chronic hypertension in okay. uh, pregnancy so. okay normally what uh, suppose it's not an emergency medicine topic at all if a patient is having hypertension in pregnancy what is the normal treatment given for that suppose somebody is admitted to your icu BP is very high, pregnancy induced hypertension or hypertensive patient developing pregnancy. How do you control the BP there? What are medicines can be used, what are medicines cannot be used? Uh, AC inhibitors and ARBs we cannot use. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we can give beta blockers, can be the calcium channel blockers, mm -hmm. and if epinephrine can be given, mm -hmm. hydralysin can be given, sir. Okay. So, any drug is possible except AC or ARB, mm -hmm. they have some potential teratogenic effects, yes. that's why they are not used. Then? If uh, refractory hypertension, then we can think about uh, sodium nitroprusside also. Sir. Sodium nitroprusside is not a very good choice. Uh, you can go uh, for some. Like we have uh, labetalol is there, yeah. we have uh, NTG is there. Yeah. There will be better choice than sodium nitroprusside. Okay. What happened to this patient afterwards? Uh, the patient has been taken up for uh, termination of pregnancy, sir. Hmm. And a preterm baby has delivered, sir. Both mother okay. and child is. So, how do you manage hypertension after pregnancy? Some patients, de after delivery, they develop high BP. What is the change in management in that type of cases and uh, pre uh, hypertension at the term of the pregnancy? How do they differ? After delivery, mm -hmm. some patients will have very high BP. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, usually resolves uh, pregnancy induced hypertension will resolve that, by 12 uh, weeks. Eclampsia will de resolve by, by delivery weeks, itself. Sorry. In other patients, we need to have adequate BP controls. So less than 130, 80 should be active. What all drugs we can use in that uh, condition? We can use again, uh, beta blockers can be given, uh, calcium channel blockers hmm. can be given. So. Can we use AC inhibitors after this? Um, so, only in terms of pregnancy, but they can continue for the next pregnancy. Even so, it's better to give calcium channel like blockers. It's not next oh. pregnancy. When the patient is having breastfeeding also, yeah. it is better yeah. to avoid. But uh, uh, Otherwise, there is no contraindication. If the patient is having high BP, you can use AC inhibitors or ARB after delivery, not before delivery. Uh, anything else you have to take care during uh, the like high BP conditions? Other than this, what all complication patients can have? Mm -hmm. During the uh, eclampsia, preeclampsia, or other complications? Low birth weight, intrauterine. No, that is a, a gynec problem. I am asking the mother. Maternal cardiac arrest. Cardiac so arrest can, can be there. Cardiac failure can, can be there. there. Can you use uh, labetalol during cardiac failure? <coughs> the patient yes. is having high BP yes. with cardiac failure. Some patients can present like that. Can you use uh, labetalol? Yeah, I am asking yes or no. We can use. We can use. Only problem is some patients can. Beta blocker has got two effects. One is it can reduce the heart rate. Other one is it can sometimes reduce the contraction of the heart. So if the patient is having minimal heart failure with high BP, the failure can increase because of the BP. In that condition, you can use beta blocker like uh, stage 1, stage 2 and all, we can safely use. But if the patient is having a known uh, cardiac failure, on top of that she has developed uh, hypertensive, uh, pre hypertension in pregnancy, then beta blockers may not be a good choice. In that condition, what all things you can use? Should we use only beta blocker in uh, eclampsia? No, sir. I can, can use any other. Yes. Drug. So that that is a common scenario. The patient will have high BP. Patient can have uh, like pregnancy induced cardiac failure. So how do you manage that situation? That is a next common scenario other than eclampsia. We can add diuretics. Diuretics may not. Uh, give good effort. Calcium channel blockers. Patient is, it's a very common scenario. Patient is having high BP. Patient is having severe cardiac failure. Both coexist in pregnancy. How do you manage that situation? Delivery is one option. That uh, mm -hmm. definitely has to be done. Instead of labetalol, what is the drug of choice? Hydrolysin can be used, but nowadays we don't get IV hydrolysin. We have only tablets. What is the drug of choice? Mm -hmm. A very common scenario. Hmm? Is that right? We use no, sir. Normally we use this drug. 
NTG. NTG is the drug of choice. In that condition, NTG is the next choice. There is no contraindication for that drug. There is no uh, like uh, uh, teratogenicity. So that can be safely used. Okay. So that, that is a uh, common scenario other than your eclampsia. What happened to this patient afterwards? Uh, the patient <laughs> right now reached the BP, sir. Uh, come to normal levels. Now no. monitoring the BP, not only medication. VCG was normal. VCG was normal. Magnesium after that also was normal. Magnesium was normal. Sir. Okay. Should we continue any treatment for this patient afterwards? Uh, indication uh, for we have to give magnesium sulfate 24 mm. hours uh, or either after last seizure episode or 24 okay. hours after okay. delivery. Sir. What is the role of aspirin in uh, eclampsia, preeclampsia? or hypertension in pregnancy. Is there any role? Uh, it is not in that, that period. It is not in the final period of the treatment. During pregnancy, is there any role for aspirin? Uh, yes, sir. Recurrent abortions, any history of... Uh, aspirin is one of the choices yes. during the hypertension, yes, uh, like hypertensive patients in pregnancy. One of the drugs. It can uh, reduce problems in the placenta. So, apply any strip, uh, apply. <coughs> so that, that has to be started. But that is not, I am not talking about emergency medicine case. So, uh, follow up, when you are following up uh, pregnant ladies, aspirin will be there in that treatment regime. <coughs> Anything else to be added? You want to add something? Mm, yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you.